Greetings, this is Vodril and welcome to Let's Play Bohemian Killing, which is an online near first person courtroom drama set in the streets of the 19th century steampunk Paris, which is what drew my attention to the game. This game is uh, made by developer Moongols, The Moongols, and published by AQ Publishing. They provide them with a key for this Let's Play which was very gracious of them so let's see what the game is all about I played just a bit to see how it plays which is rather strange so we'll see how it goes this game adapts to the choices you make its lie can change the verdict for better or worse remember that during your testimony you are not creating history you are lying about what has already happened in Bohemian Killing, there are hundreds of possibilities. You can frame other people, lie, manipulate evidence and witnesses, plead guilty, or even act insane. She should be here by now. So basically, we probably did kill her and we lie. The very interesting thing about this game, the little uh, amount of time I played it with, uh, is that there is no set path. You go and do whatever you like and the story follows through that action, which is really both weird and interesting. Yeah. So let's get started. What does it say? I can't tell. I think it's Latin, but I'm not sure. We're left-handed apparently. Since this uh, murder mystery, I think that will be important. Okay. Interactions will skip time. Try it by using the book on the table. In-game time runs like real life and it is important to arrange a reliable testimony. Yeah, this is the tutorial by the way, it doesn't actually, I think, matter. You can skip dialogues by holding E, we won't do that. This is for multiple playthroughs. Damn, that's platter. <laughs> Monsieur Eaton. Monsieur Eaton. Monsieur Eaton, I'm talking to you. I'm sorry, Monsieur le Président, I, I was thinking. Do you understand the indictment? Sorry, but I have to ask the prosecutor to repeat. Monsieur Eaton, do you consider it to be a joke? You're charged with a serious crime. Please stay focused. Monsieur Prosecutor, please continue. As I said, I accuse Alfred Eaton of murdering Marie Capet on the 17th of October 18... Some of the actors are friends, but I'm not sure all of them are. Some of them seem... ...not so friends. As it is apparent from the testimony of witnesses, the accused left at about 8.30pm, before the end of the banquet. At about 9.25 p.m., he rented a room in his name at the Caucasus Hotel, which is adjacent to the building in which he lives. It was in that room uh, that approximately at 11.16 p.m., Marie Capet was murdered. Next, 
the accused returned to his house, and at about 10.05 p.m., he entered his apartment in the company of Marie Capet, or let her in. It results from the fingerprint analysis. It did not show the victim's fingerprints on the outer side of the door, only on the inner. Alfred Eaton, by means of deception or threats, led the victim to his secret workshop, which is located on the first floor of his apartment. The police report did not indicate any signs of struggle or resistance. The accused probably wanted to test on Marie Capet the prototype of a torture machine of his construction, which was in the room along with medical tools and manuals of torture. When Marie Capet realized what the accused intended to do, she grabbed a metal rod lying in the room and hit the accused on the head, which caused a real threat to his life and, according to doctors, may have caused unconsciousness. The fingerprints of Marie Capet's left hand were found on the rod, as well as Alfred Eaton's traces of blood. Left hand. Traces of blood were also found on the floor of that room. At the time of his arrest, the accused had an extensive wound on his head, as confirmed by medical examination. Seizing the opportunity, Mary Capet fled from the apartment. She was stressed and in a hurry. This was confirmed by her numerous fingerprints secured on the inside of the door of the apartment of the accused. Then, Marie Capet ran into a nearby hotel, the Caucasus. It was the same hotel in which the accused rented a room. As it appears from the testimony of the clerk, Marie Capet was extremely stressed, repeating the word doctor and police. Probably she wanted to call for help. When the clerk went to get some water to calm Marie Capet, she disappeared. The next day, on the 18th of October, about 8.32 a.m., a maid found her body in a room rented by Alfred Eaton. It was covered with numerous fingerprints of the victim and of the accused, and had traces of the victim's blood. The immediate cause of death was a severe blow to the abdomen in the liver area with a blade of about 14 centimetres length. The murder weapon constructed by the accused was secured in his apartment. Marie Capet's unwashed blood stains were still present on it as well as the fingerprints of the accused. The accused is also charged by the testimony of one of the neighbours who passed the accused at the front door of the building in which they both lived at about 11.30pm. The witness testified that the clothing of the accused was stained with blood. Unfortunately, the said clothes were not found. At the time of committing the alleged crime, the accused was sane, which means he acted consciously. For committed crimes, the accused shall be liable to life imprisonment or the death penalty. Has the accused finally understood the indictment? Oui, Monsieur le Président. Does the accused plead guilty to the charges against him? Non, Monsieur le Président. Does the accused want to provide explanations? Oui, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Monsieur le Président, could I ask you for some conversation time with my client? Of course. I just wish it would not take too much time. We've already wasted too much of it. Monsieur Eaton, please note that you can look through evidence at any moment. It is available by pressing tab. All right, let's take it out. Alfred Eaton's dagger. Designed and manufactured by Alfred Eaton, so unique. Unwashed traces of blood were found on it as well as 
he turns finger prints, which makes sense since it's his own dagger. Metal Road, uh, found in the Alfred Eaton secret workshop, it was probably part of some sort of invention. Fingerprints of Marie Capel's left hand were found on the road. So he used this to strike uh, us, I guess. Police report, she was found the next day at 32 am. Not missing anything. The murder weapon was secured in the apartment of the accused. Blood traces were found on the belongings of the accused on the floor of the secret workshop in his apartment. The metal rod was secured. Okay. There were no traces of victim's blood in the apartment of the accused. No struggle or resistance signs. Fingerprints of the accused were found in the room of the hotel and on the murder weapon, which makes total sense. That doesn't mean we killed here. The victim fingerprints were also found in the room of the Kakasus Hotel, left hand. Fingerprints of the victim were found on the metal rod. Numerous fingerprints of the victim's left hand were found on the inner side of the door. So... Indicate that the victim acted in a high stress or shock and she had trouble opening the door. Okay. The victim was killed with a knife in the liver. Uh, death occurred between 11 pm and 11.20 pm. We got hit in the head, uh, most likely had a concussion. Could result in the loss of consciousness and even death. And it happened between 10 and 10.45 pm. So he is intelligent, I guess. And he's not crazy. He has made a torture machine, or we have made a torture machine, which is kinda weird. But everyone needs a hobby, I guess. The scientific community considered it as disgusting and unworthy the print. Its sale was banned after numerous protests of French Academy of Sciences. The bad old days. Uh, there is a signature from us, okay, for the hotel room. 9.25 pm, okay. Why are we renting a floor there uh, frequently too? Hmm. And she also called for a doctor and she wasn't hurt, so I wonder if she was hurt and we don't know about it yet. Or if she wanted a doctor for us and something else going on. At about 11.30 pm a witness was leaving the building in which he lived and passed the accused Alfred Eaton in the door who was entering the building. Clothes of the accused were soaked in blood. Okay. Defense evidence can be unlocked during the testimony, so we ha don't have any of those. Supporting. Origin Romani. Class low. Apparently, in the bad old days, you had your social class in your identification, which is... Yeah. Lateralization left-handed. So... We are left-handed. And Marie Carpe, also class low, she's right-handed. So if she's right-handed, how did she strike us with her left hand? And she tried to open the door with the left hand as well. That means she either couldn't use the right hand, maybe that's why she needed a doctor, or someone else did uh, that. Or he was holding someone with the right hand. Hmm, I don't know. That's weird. 
He was bullied because of his gypsy origin. He helped his parents in their grocery store. He built a prototype vending machine. Aha, uh -huh, okay. And he got rich uh, from that, I guess. They attended the same school with. Oh, so Marie and the, uh, Alfred went to the same school. She was hired uh, in a house of a wealthy Parisian, Monsieur Brissot. She despised Alfred Eaton, considered him a thief and a swindler who made money on poor people. She was right handed, that's weird. Okay, nothing really interesting. It was impossible to contact Albert Brissot, which is the... Oh, it's uh, who hired uh, Marie. And apparently he lives in the same building as uh, Alfred, which is kind of weird. So they live in the same building. Okay. Other neighbors consistently testified that they had not enjoyed sharing their building with a person from a lower social class, especially with a gypsy. So basically they were all racist. And in the good old days you could actually say that uh, and not have any issues. We officially informed that Albert Brissot does not have or ever owned a telephone or a telegraph. Alright, that's all I guess. I will show the defense evidence to the court at the time of your uncovering during the testimony. It might surprise the prosecutor. If necessary, you can recall the string of events according to the prosecution by pressing the Q key. Kind of breaking immersion then with the keys, but... Testimony. I will give you my advice and remind you of important facts and events. Yes. Again, this game is meant to play it multiple times, so that's why they give you the choice to skip we things. Are ready. Uh, but since this is my first playthrough... Let's get started. Monsieur Eaton, what were you doing on October 17th, 1894, from 8 to 12 p.m.? There was a theatrical premiere of Prométhée that day, which was sponsored by Le Feu, in which I am the lead designer. Starting at 7 p.m., I was at the premiere at the Opéra Garnier. Around 8.30 p.m., after the play, I found that I did not want to attend the dull banquet, and instead, I preferred to work. I said goodbye to Hugo Argent, uh, president of Le Feu, and I drove home. I got there at about 9 p.m. All right. For a moment, I admired the charming streets of Montmartre. And this is where we create our own... Uh, I stopped a bit, you know, a bit after that. Now we can pick what we do, and that is what we say in the storyline happened. Uh, let's look around. For a moment, I admire... I dis I do not recall that now. Okay. Don't go for a walk then. It's not completely open. Oh, what the... What's with the feathers? I read the restaurant's menu. This... Birds have issues. I looked at the poster of the play, Prométhée, sponsored by Le Feu Company. It was the exact premiere where I had spent the evening. I looked at slogans written by the rabble. They incited to the new revolution. Can't see our body. I read cultural announcements. Hotel. Uh, 9.25 is where we are meant to be in the hotel. For a 
moment I admire the charms of And it's nine. So we have twenty-five more minutes. I looked at slogans inciting to the new revolution written on the walls by the rabble. I do not recall that part. Okay, we can't leave. We can't go in there because it's too soon. Uh, we can go up to our apartment or we can get in there. Uh, I went in there and I don't want to do the same thing. I might have not seen it, but I saw it, so... Let's try doing another path. I want to see how different it can get. And we'll keep an eye on the time. There was a letter for me from the Ministère de la Justice. Monsieur le Président, this is the evidenced mark with number two. It clearly shows that my client designed his interrogation machine with only the best intentions. According to his plan, it was supposed to be forwarded to the prosecutor's office and law enforcement agencies to improve the effectiveness of interrogation. The prosecutor's suggestions that my client has supposedly <laughs> intended to use this device to torture helpless women is hasty and completely untrue. This letter only proves that the accused was looking for application of his torture machine and had not found any support from Ministère de la Justice so he decided to test it on an innocent woman. I like this back and forth. The court supports the view that the mere fact of an offer to the Minister de la Justice does not constitute sufficient evidence that the allegedly accused acted in good faith when creating such a device. Monsieur Eaton, please go back to your testimony. Okay, well, uh, we have some evidence, so let me see if I can... Uh... Yeah, there we go. Monsieur Ritton, thank you for your proposal, but the minister does not use interrogation methods based on pain. Methods proposed by you are inhumane and what is the worst, they can result in numerous lawsuits for the violation of the personal rights. I like that uh, the worst thing, it's not that they're inhumane, but uh, they will get sued for it. The court supports the view oh yeah, this is something weird the game does. When you go into the menu, in the tab, to check the evidence, etc., it starts the conversation from scratch. The court supports the view like that. That's the really weird. fact of an offer to the Minister de la Justice does not constitute sufficient evidence that I guess the can look around. accused acted in good faith when creating such a device. Monsieur Eaton, please go back to your testimony. All right, now what time is it? Still early. Then I opened the door. I stopped to read the announcement. What is this? Ah, uh, what? Le Feu. Apparently Le Feu is making food dispensers. What? Fish, Zambon, eggs. Tomato, more tomato, what the hell is the pome? Pome is a fit. Apple, maybe? Fromage, which is a cheese, I guess. I don't want to buy anything. Then I turned on my vending machine to check if it was working. It is a steampunk version of Paris, so that makes sense. Have time yet? Let's go check our. Uh, then I called the elevator. Oh, it's uh, really here. The elevator grate. My bad. Then I took the elevator to the second floor. The game is not bad looking. 
Actually, I like uh, the graphics. The music seems nice too. I opened the door and entered my apartment. I'm not sure what makes us uh, go get um, a room. And apparently, apparently the hotel is right next to our apartment, so it's kind of weird. I glanced on the frames hanging on the wall. Uh, simplicity calmed me down and, and allowed me to focus. He has empty frames with no art inside. That is strange. Uh, let's look around. Then I opened the door. I'm not sure what I can interact with, so I can cook for 10 minutes, pass the time, I guess. Yeah, I can eat some leftovers. Then I eat some leftover oysters with a few caviar tarts. From Damn, this guy is loaded as hell. Caviar and wine and a huge apartment, which seems rather uh, classical. Unfortunately, he can't hold his wine, which is uh, weird for a French person. Oh, can I play? I tried to play something on the piano. I must add that I cannot play, and the piano is just for decoration. <laughs> okay, so no, we cannot play. Then I opened the door. Uh, there are no reflections, we have no presence here, basically we're just a camera in the game. We have no body or reflection, which is not cool, but... I examined the new sculptures in my apartment. They beautifully fit the decor and the marble. All these frames are empty, that's very very strange. I examined the historic tableware in the dining room. Seriously, why are they all empty? Is there a reason or is it an engine thing? I examined the yeah, yeah, I know. in my apartment. They beautifully fit the decor and the mouth. Okay, I have 20 minutes left. Then I used the stairs. This is a pretty expensive apartment. Full of empty young I, I mean, if there was art in this, <laughs> but still. Me down and yeah, yeah, yeah. I examined my new invention's prototype and considered what else should be done. Okay. Work on your invention 30 minutes. No, we don't actually have 30 minutes. Make a call 5 minutes, maybe. I listen to music on the gramophone. But there is no music. That didn't pass the time, okay. Then I so I guess time only passes when it says... Uh, no, plus five minutes. Let's try that. I spent a few minutes talking on the phone. Who Whoa. did you call? It has nothing to do with the case, Monsieur le Président. Well, please continue. That's weird. It's a weird answer to a judge. Doesn't concern you. Well, okay. I opened the inner door. And now we're going to change our clothes. We won't go to sleep, obviously. That clock doesn't work over there. I opened the hidden door behind my bookcase. Nice. Love hidden rooms. Can you explain to the court why you have a hidden workshop? I work there on my secret projects that I create independently of your group. I understand. Please continue. Man, I wish I had the secret room. I checked if the designs of my most important invention were still in place. Please tell the court which invention these designs are related to. Uh, no, it is classified information, Monsieur le Président. 
Good. Please continue. Again, how the hell do we keep saying no to the guy? That's really weird. No. Oh, I'll take up the dagger. Up the mechanical dagger lying on the desk. Why do you need a weapon, Monsieur Eaton? I wear it to ensure my safety. Do you feel unsafe? I am a wealthy gypsy. At least one third of the population of this city wants me dead. I understand. Please continue. Damn. Again, the battle days. All right. I'll end the first episode here and uh, we'll uh, continue going through this rather interesting and unique game in the next one. For now, thank you for watching. As usually, feel free to leave a comment if you want to. Press the like button, it always helps. Subscribe if you haven't, all the good stuff. And I will see you next time with more Bohemian killing.